Hey, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rebecca and today I'm going to talk about what it means to be grounded. In this video, I'm going to talk about what are the signs or the feelings of being ungrounded, some common causes of being ungrounded, and what yogic tools you can use to ground yourself. So if you have foot problems, ankle, knee, or any leg problems, sciatica, low back problems, and even obesity, I think you're gonna find this video very interesting. First, let's talk about consciousness and its relationship to your physical existence. So we are multidimensional beings, and I've talked about this before, but as a multidimensional being, you have other aspects of the human body that you can't see. The only part that we're really focused on usually is the physical body. The physical body has a neutral electrical charge, and the earth, the surface of the earth, has a negative electrical charge. And when our physical body takes on a charge that's different from the surface of the earth, we get this feeling or uh, sensation of being ungrounded. But what does that mean? From an electrical standpoint, grounding is a term that's used to remove excess energy from an object. From a human standpoint, removing excess emotional or intellectual charge from a human being is considered grounding. And when we have an imbalance like this that goes on for a period of time, from a yogic standpoint, this starts to manifest in the physical body in the form of an illness or a disease or even just aches and pains. When we spend too much time in the other dimensions, the other aspects of ourselves, the emotional or the mental, then we start to develop an energy pattern that keeps us in there on this sort of like a repeat. I call it the hamster wheel. And then once we're on the hamster wheel, we've got this energy pattern that reinforces the emotional and the thought patterns, which then manifest into the physical body. And so at that point, we have taken our perfectly balanced human body and by spending much too much time in the emotional or the thought process aspect of ourselves, we then throw our perfectly balanced human body off balance and that's when we start to bring the physical body into that state of unease or disease. If you don't know about the five layers of the human being, I'm gonna put a link below in the description box. You should check it out after this video. All right, so moving on, what are the feelings of being ungrounded? So if you're feeling ungrounded, you might have excessive thoughts. You start to feel perhaps some anxiety, develop phobias, fears. Usually these things are related to survival. Feelings of abandonment, scarcity mentality, and territoriality. And kind of that sort of piggybacks on this, um, the the mentalities that go with this are the victim mentality, uh, codependency, and material insecurity. And so these feelings and thoughts are common, so it's not unusual for people to experience periods of these. But when they go on for a long period of time, that's when they start to manifest in the physical body. And there are things in our lives that can trigger these thoughts and feelings and it's perfectly normal to experience them. But if they go on for a prolonged period of time, they definitely need to be addressed. So life circumstances that can make you feel ungrounded. Number one, I think is moving. That one's a no brainer. When you are picking up and you're moving to another location, you're, it's like a tree pulling its roots out of the ground and being transported to someone else, somewhere else you feel ungrounded. Loss is another big one, whether it's loss of a loved one, a person, or if it's loss of a job, loss of a marriage, big things in life that have a big impact on you, something like loss, where you can feel like you've lost a piece of yourself can make you feel sort of scattered and ungrounded. It might create those excessive thoughts. And I think the third big thing I mean, there's more, but I'm just kind of going on the, the big ones here. I think the third big thing is 
when you go through a major transformation or some sort of spiritual awakening. And people seem to be doing this all the time nowadays. As we evolve, I think things are changing on the planet. People are changing their perspective and shifting their perceptions. And so this is allowing them to grow a little bit. And when they do that, they kind of step out of their previous spiritual understanding and the world kind of opens up in front of them. Now, this can happen, this is usually a good thing, but sometimes if the person is not in a supportive environment or they don't have any guidance that they need, they can feel a little bit lost. You know, almost like an existential crisis. They can feel ungrounded. They can feel like they've been, they've, they've lost their previous way of thinking and they've been, you know, they've kind of catapulted forward into this new way of thinking. So that can definitely make a person feel ungrounded. All right, real quick, if you are finding any of this information helpful, please hit the like button below. Um, it'll help other people find this useful information as well. It helps my YouTube channel grow, the algorithm, all that stuff. And if you like any of my other videos, hit the subscribe button so you can see my next ones that come out. All right, so let's kind of talk about how does this shift, how does this manifest in the physical? Problems in the feet, the arches, ankles, toes, uh, plantar fasciitis, things of that nature. Um, those, your feet are your connection to the earth. And so it's just kind of uh, the way it works, right? Those, that's your, what is standing on the ground. That's where you would feel your rooted feeling. Whenever we do, um, I'll talk about it in a second, but when we do exercises to feel grounded, we're talking about the feet and drawing feelings into the feet. So your feet, um, issues with the feet and your legs and all the way up into the lower parts of your spine. So if you have knee problems, hip problems, um, and I'm talking more like the bones and joints here, any kind of joint problems. If you have problems in your SI joint or your lower lumbar, those things um, are associated with feelings of being ungrounded. So whether or not you correlate the two, uh, there's definitely a pattern with people that experience these things in life, anxiety, phobias, moving, loss, all this stuff, um, and it sticks with them in a chronic way and they get stuck in that energetic pattern, that hamster wheel, it starts to manifest in the physical. And we're not taught to correlate the two in this, you know, in our culture, but it, these are things that, um, you know, in spirituality and in yoga is very common to understand that this is where, that's where it manifests. So things like um, arthritis and joint issues, low back issues, SI joint issues, that's kind of, you know, when you're, when you're walking and your foot hits the ground, that point of impact sends, um, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? It sends energy up through the legs and its first place of impact in the spine goes up through the SI joint. So your SI joint is the sac where the sacrum connects to the ilium or your pelvis. And you have two little joints, little fissure joints, and those often um, get aggravated. And, you know, and also yoga too is kind of like the chicken or the egg. And sometimes we can have these physical problems through trauma. So maybe we fell, or maybe we've, um, we're going through pregnancy, or maybe you have an overuse injury from something that you do, a sports related, whatever it is. Um, sometimes when you affect the physical body through trauma, it also affects you energetically and emotionally. And so the feelings um, that are associated with ungroundedness come with the injury. So it can go either way, it's the chicken or the egg. So I kind of got off track here a little bit. So the first one I want to talk about, your feet, your legs, and your connection to the earth. And the second one I wanted to talk about is obesity. And so why would obesity be associated with, with being ungrounded? Well, in yoga and spirituality, we look at obesity as the body's way of protecting itself. And so if you don't feel safe or secure, or if you're having um, anxiety about something, or if there's just something in your life that makes you feel like you need protection, 
whether it's conscious or unconscious, it doesn't really matter. The body is an intelligent organism on its own. You're the consciousness that's, that's driving, but in a sense, it does its own thing. You know, we don't have to think about breathing. We don't have to think about our moon cycles. We don't have to really think about, you know, delivering a baby. Like those kinds of things are, are fairly natural. It's, it, the body knows what to do. And so the body has this innate intelligence and in the world of yoga and spirituality, we look at obesity as a way of protection. I think it's fascinating. I'm not saying that, you know, calories in, calories out isn't important. Healthy foods are absolutely important. But on the same token, I can't tell you how many people I've worked with who just struggle with the weight, can't take it off. They've tried so many diets, they work out. I mean, honestly, the calorie intake is not equal to the output and the I've just seen it before. And interestingly they start to come into a yoga practice they learn relaxation techniques they start to do that inner work of diving into the emotions and finding the sources and, and things of that nature all those things that we do in yoga practice and they start to find the reason and aha moments right they have these insights into themselves and i don't know if it's the stress reduction or you know, if it's the sort of intuition that they're starting to develop or a combination of both, but they start to lose weight that way. And, you know, the other thing connected to obesity is in the gut, about 95% of the body serotonin is created there. And so when we're feeling unsafe or anxious or, you know, needing support, from the from the earth we don't know that it's that that's what we need we seek comfort in food and food makes us feel better so there's there's a multifaceted reason why obesity would be linked to feeling ungrounded and when we're practicing grounding techniques whether it's the physical postures that are working with the physical issue you have going on or if it's just the fact that you're practicing mindfulness and relaxation techniques to reduce the stress levels, that helps too because when stress levels are reduced, your cortisol levels are also balancing out. When that happens, inflammation is reduced. Inflammation is reduced and you can sleep better at night as well. So the body has its natural healing process in motion because of the practices. All right, so now you know what grounding is and what happens when you feel ungrounded. What are the tools of yoga that we can use to specifically address this issue? Well, that's easy. Any of the standing poses and any of the seated poses. Now, I'm biased towards yoga therapy because I like using a targeted practice that really focuses on the mindfulness, the awareness, and specific postures for specific, for specific issues. However, if you just are going to a basic, well-rounded yoga class taught by a teacher that's certified and teaches you great awareness and mindfulness techniques to go with the practice, it's going to help. I'm biased towards a targeted practice because I think results happen faster. And so, you can do your own targeted practices by learning a little bit more about yoga, the poses, and what energy channels they activate when you do the poses, or you can study one-on-one -on -one with a private yoga instructor that can help put together a practice for you. So, standing poses or seated poses. And within these two categories of poses, you have so many yoga poses to choose from. And be sure to keep in mind that it's not just doing the poses. You have to do the poses with mindfulness, awareness, and connect your breath to the movements. And you also have to be aware of activating certain muscles or muscle groups when you're doing these exercises. And doing these yoga poses that are specific for grounding, when you do them on a regular basis, they're going to help balance your energy patterns. When you start to balance your energy patterns, it's going to naturally affect your thought patterns and your emotions. 
when the physical body and the energy body start to become more in balance, the intellect and the emotions also come into balance. Meditation is also really helpful for grounding and there are plenty of grounding meditations that you can do out there. I personally find that for beginners um, and pretty much anybody, once you've already jumped on the hamster wheel and you have those excessive thoughts and emotions, I think it's easier to focus and bring yourself back into the physical body if you're doing the poses as opposed to sitting down or in a comfortable position where you're trying to focus the mind and the thoughts. That's a lot more challenging. All right, so that's it. That's all I've got for today. Thank you for listening all the way to the end. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.